and welcome to our Church of All Souls this Christmas Eve night. It's wonderful to be able to welcome you all here to Midnight Mass. And a special warm welcome to you. If it's your first time coming to Midnight Mass service here in this <coughs> church, you are especially welcome here amongst us. Our service this evening will be following through the special Christmas booklet. And I'd like to ask you all to join in with the bold print words printed on the inside. Our carols will also come from the same booklet. They're all printed with numbers which are related to the number board on the side of the church there. Uh, as we go through the service, we'll call out the number to you. The church is looking wonderful. There's a warmth with the candles, the beauty of the flowers, the crib is ready, our hearts are prepared. Let us begin our Christmas celebrations and worship tonight.
in the brightness of your one true light. Bring us who have known the revelation of that light on earth to see the radiance of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated for the readings from the Bible. Through him, 
and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in him, who gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or the will of the man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us. We have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. First, I'd like to wish you all a very merry Christmas indeed. It's truly wonderful that we're able to gather together, tell the story afresh once more of how our Lord and Saviour came among us and saw life as we see it, experienced the same highs and the same lows that we experience, and brought us at that same time to know God Almighty. I'm wondering if there might be a few among us that might be getting ready to open a gift or two in the morning. Maybe Perhaps there's one or two that might actually be young enough to be among us who might be planning quite a reasonable start to the day at, say, 4 a.m. Too early? 3. When I was young, I started at 2. Bouncing into my parents' room as I did, just excited to get the day started. It was different. Then there will be those of us who will become occupied with some of the preparations that the day will bring us. For food, and for family, and friends. Excitement or busyness aside, we try our best to mark out this particular day as special, as memorable. And we try to set it apart. And in the church, things that are often set apart and made memorable are called holy. It's one of the definitions of the word. To be set apart. So for this one day, we are living in a freshly different way from usual. We're very lucky. We have come to mark out the birthday of our Lord with moments of giving, just like God gave us his son, and of meeting and eating, just like Jesus did with many of his friends. We have so many different ways of celebrating and making this day freshly different from usual. Well, now I'm pretty sure that we're familiar with how the Christmas story runs. So we're keeping with the idea of telling ourselves the story afresh this year. I wanted to share with you all a slightly different take on the Christmas story. And this version comes from the experience of a school nativity play. There are no teachers amongst us, are there? <laughs> Now, there's no folk tale of the nativity story. Excuse me. You're a teacher. I'm a teacher. 
<laughs> well, now I have to be careful. Now, there's no folk tale in the Tiki story in which the wise men, on their way to Bethlehem, find accommodation one night with a peasant called Babushka. You may have come across the story. Before leaving, the wise men asked Babushka if she would like to come with them and meet the newborn king. I can't, she said. I'm too busy running this place of accommodation. But once the wise men had left, she changes her mind. She packs up some gifts for the newborn king and sets off for Bethlehem, only to find an empty stable. She's too late. Mary, Joseph, and the baby had already left for Egypt and for safety. Now, my little story is about a nativity play which wanted to tell Babushka's story. But it doesn't go according to plan. What school nativities do? <laughs> The children were putting the finishing touches to their play. It was the dress rehearsal. Everyone was excited. Everyone except for one boy called Matthew. Matthew was to play the part of Joseph, and he was being teased by his friends who played the wise men. Hey Matthew, what's it like to be married? Teased one of his friends. Matt, your wife needs you, giggled another. She wants to hold your hand, called out the last. <coughs> Matthew couldn't stand all the embarrassment. He exploded like a box of fireworks. I hate girls! And I hate you too, he yelled. I'm never going to play with you again. Matthew really didn't want to play the part of Joseph at all. Well, the next day was performance day. The assembly hall was filling up, and Miss Black, the teacher, was reminding everyone what to do. Now, remember, Matthew, when you come on, you come on in the second scene. She tells him, you stand behind the manger, beside Mary. You wait until the wise men bring their gifts. Then you take Mary's hand and lead her and baby Jesus off towards Egypt. Matthew scowled. He still didn't want to be Joseph. And he still hated the wise men for teasing him. The play got underway. The first scene, where the wise men stay with Babushka, passed off smoothly. Then came the second scene, Matthew's scene. Grimly, Matthew trudged onto the stage with Mary and stood at her side. The wise men came and knelt before the manger, one by one and then turned and offered to Matthew the gifts that they had brought, the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. <clears throat> Matthew, still scowling about everything, snatched their gifts away very angrily. But in his anger, he forgot what to do next. Mary nudged him. Move! She said. He was meant to leave for Egypt ages ago. He grabbed Mary's hand and scurried off the stage as quickly as he could. Now, no sooner had they reached the wings, but the two of them turned around and realized. You're ahead of me. <laughs> yes, that in their rush, they had forgotten the baby Jesus. Mary tried to run back. No, 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 called out Miss Black. You can't run back. Everyone's going to notice. 
Mary was terribly upset at getting it all wrong, and Matthew felt very bad indeed. If he had just let his anger go, none of this would have been so bad. Well, the last scene was the scene where Babushka was supposed to reach the stable too late to see the baby Jesus. The trouble was, thanks to Mary and Matthew, she isn't too late at all. <coughs> baby Jesus is still there, plain as the day, lying in the manger. And Matthew looked out from the windows and could see some of the parents trying hard not to laugh. At the end, the girl who played Mary was so upset. I would remember Jesus if I didn't have to look after that Matthew, she sniffed. Well, you can imagine how Matthew felt about that. If he was going to get teased just one more time, It's never too late to find a Christ.
and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
prayers of your children, may these gifts of the people be used to the glory of your kingdom. Amen. Amen. All people are welcome to come before the altar of All Souls Church this evening. If your wish is to receive a blessing in place of the bread and the wine, please do just let your request be known at the point of distribution. We're on page six in the service books. Word made flesh, light of the world. In your incarnation, you embrace our poverty. By your spirit, may we share in your riches. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And your spirit be with you. Give up your heart. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our Lord. This is your right to give thanks and praise. All glory and honor be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who, for the love of our fallen race, humbled himself was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit, and lived as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to Claim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Spirit of your people, 
and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Martin, St. Nicholas, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us pray in confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil.
and myself and the community around a very peaceful Christmas day. <coughs> Let us pray. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill, and make you partakers of the divine nature and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Go in peace, proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, Glory thanks and praise to God.